Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be summing an infinite series. We have 1 plus 4 over 7 plus 9 over 49 plus 16 over 343, so on and so forth. I'll give you the general term so you'll have a better idea, but we're going to be evaluating this infinite series. With infinite series, we need to be careful because there is the question of whether it converges or not. In other words, can we find a finite sum by adding all these numbers. So to be able to solve this problem, first we're gonna look at the general pattern, we're gonna use some notation, and then try to go from there. There's obviously more than one way to go there, which you'll see when I give you the result in the general form, okay? So if you're ready to dive into infinite series, let's go ahead and take a look. So we have one plus four over seven and then nine over 49. But looking at the first few terms, you hopefully realized or recognized something. This is one, which can be written as one squared. Four is two squared. Nine is three squared. So those are perfect squares. What about seven? Seven is just a number. What about 49? It's seven squared. Nice. So are we talking about three squared over seven squared and then two squared over seven? Hmm, that's interesting. So one thing that varies here is the numerators. Numerators are perfect squares, so the next term would be four squared, but what, it, what is it gonna be divided by? That's given by powers of seven. So even though all the terms are different, the denominators are powers of seven. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure we understand that first, okay? So we don't have a seven here, but you, we could easily write it as zero to the seventh power. So what's the general pattern? Let's take a look. First of all, I want to write this as follows. 1 plus 4 times 1 over 7 plus 9 times 1 over 7 squared. And of course, the next term is going to be 16 times 1 over 7 cubed and so on and so forth. So here's how it goes. 1 over 7 is repeating. I mean, over and over, you see the same thing. So obviously, 1 over 7 is a repeating decimal, but that's a different story. So we can call it something. How about R? R is very common with geometric series, and this kind of looks like one or maybe something we can derive. So this is going to be called R. So then this will be R squared. Then this will be R cubed. So what do we have? We have 1 as the first term, plus 4R, plus 9R squared, plus 16R cubed, so on and so forth. I think this is good enough. You hopefully get the idea, uh, get the pattern from a few terms. So what is going on here? We have a perfect square being multiplied by a power of r. But this is 2 squared and this is r to the first power. Make sense? It's kind of like 2 to the second multiplied by r to the first and then 3 to the second multiplied by r to the second. Now here's what I want you to pay attention to. To the bases and the exponents like this. When this is 2, this is 1. And of course maybe I should write one more term so it'll become even more clear, 4 to the second times r to the third. Yeah, this is probably a good idea. Now, what you can see here is 2 squared is multiplied by r to the first. And then we have the 3 at the base. Let's go ahead and use the same color. And then that is multiplied by the second power. And then 4 is multiplied by the third power. You see the difference? The difference is 1. So how do you express this? using sigma notation. That is the very critical part because you know what? That's gonna give me an idea about how I can solve this problem. And here's how it goes. And the first one can be written as one to the second power multiplied by r to the power zero. Once more, we verify the difference between these two numbers and that's one. Okay, make sense? So we can go write it as follows. Sigma n equals one and you can start at zero if you want, but I want to start at one because my first perfect square is one squared and then goes to infinity. And of course, n squared is going to come up. So this is going to give us one squared and then two squared and then three squared and then four squared. But I also have to multiply this by a power of r, which is one less than n. So that's going to be n minus one. Beautiful. Once you write this, the rest is going to be fairly easy. Even without this, it could be easy. I'm not sure, but I think this makes it easier. So, 
How do you get there? I have n squared times r to the power n minus 1. Now, if I had n times r to the power n minus 1, this would be very easy to deal with. You know why? Because I could take r to the power n, differentiate it, that's going to give me that. Okay, how should I show this? Here we go. Okay. But I don't have n times r to the power n minus 1. Instead, I have n squared. But that can be taken care of. If you differentiate n times r to the n, this n is a constant because we're differentiating with respect to r. Didn't I say that? Pro probably didn't. But we are respect, uh, respect. We are differentiating with respect to r because r is the variable. In this case, n is considered a constant for this particular term. So it's going to be n times n, which is n squared times r to the power of n minus 1. So we got the term we're looking for. But what is that supposed to mean? It means you can go ahead and find the series expansion for this, which I'm going to show you what that looks like. n equals 1 to infinity, maybe. Is that going to work? Let's expand it. We can always experiment. First, we figured out the general form. And then we can test it uh, specifically. For n equals 1, this is going to be r to the first power, which is r. And then 2r squared, 3r cubed, so on and so forth. If you differentiate everything here, term by term, you get 1 plus 4r plus 9r squared. And then, of course, let me write one more term so it becomes even more clear. 4r to the fourth, that'll be 16r to the power 3. And didn't we have that? Yes, we did. There you go. So this is the derivative of something. Make sense? So if I can find the formula for this sum, then I can do the derivative. Make sense? Cool. How do you find it then? Let's take a look. So I do need this sum, right? How do I find it? Well, first of all, I can factor out an r and then look at this sum. But when I look at this sum, that kind of reminds me another sum that I'm familiar with, which is the original geometric series. What is that? 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus r to the fourth power, right? And isn't this 1 over 1 minus r when r is between negative 1 and 1? And of course, our r is 1 over 7, therefore it satisfies the criteria. Now, we can go ahead and do this. Differentiate both sides, or you already memorized it maybe, right? When we do, we get 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared plus 4r to the third, so on and so forth. And of course, the derivative is going to be 1 over 1 minus r squared. There is a negative one that comes from the derivative of negative r, but that's uh, compensated by the power of negative 1 or negative 2. Okay, So that becomes a positive power. I mean negative power because it's in the denominator. Anyways, you get the idea. So this is my sum, but remember, I'm supposed to multiply that by r which is going to give me this, and then I'm going to do something to it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by r. So r plus 2r squared plus 3r cubed plus 4r to the fourth. It's just going to be this multiplied by r, and then I will differentiate both sides to get the sum I'm looking for. Remember, the sum we're looking for is this one, and I do need to differentiate for that. Make sense? Because when I differentiate, it's going to give me 1 plus 4r, plus 9r squared plus 16r to the third, dot, dot, dot. So I kind of need to worry about the derivative of this expression. Let me tell you what it is. When you differentiate, use the quotient rule, so on and so forth. You're going to get 1 plus r over 1 minus r to the third power. But you want to see where that comes from? Okay, I'll show you. If you differentiate this, you're actually going to get from the quotient rule something that looks like this. The derivative of r times the denominator plus the derivative of the denominator, which is 2 times 1 minus r times negative 1, so it's going to become a negative, times the first function, which is r. So that kind of becomes, I think, a negative number, but we can kind of reverse it. And again, this is going to turn into, eventually, after you simplify, you're going to get 1 plus r divided by 1 minus r to the third power. So with the 7, this r is going to be 1 over 7, so it's going to look like this. You're just going to replace r with 1 over 7, 1 plus 1 over 7, divided by 1 minus 1 over 7, 
to the third power. That's going to give us 8 over 7 divided by 6 over 7 to the third, which is 8 over 7 times 7 to the third divided by 6 to the third. I can cancel out one of these and end up with 8 times 49 divided by 260. Any simplifications? Yeah. This half of this is 108, half of that is 54 divided by 4. This is going to become a 2. And we can still divide and this becomes a 27. And the answer would be 49 over 27. A perfect square divided by a perfect cube. How nice is that? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.